Hello, welcome to Fireside Chats. I am Magla Pillay and the subject of interest to us today is called Spiritual Love and Compassion. Sister Denise, who is with us in the studio, has been practicing Raj Yoga meditation for 40 years and she will share her wisdom and insight into what I consider to be a universally relevant and deeply meaningful topic. In this series, we ask you to look at what your spiritual foundation is, if you have one. We also look at things like philosophical as well as spiritual integrity. We ask you to take a good look into your heart and ask yourself important questions such as, is your life working for you at the moment or are there changes that you need to effect so that you can improve the quality of your life? Thank you so much for joining us today and I'd like to welcome Sister Denise. Thank you so much, Sister Denise, for sharing with us your time. Thank you. So, spiritual love and wisdom. Let's start with the first part of that uh, title. Spiritual love is very different from the other kind. Tell us in your experience what the difference is. Well, spiritual love is that you love the soul not the body. Spiritual love is that you love without expectation of a return for that love. Spiritual love is, um, it's, it can be completely altruistic, but your angle on it is altruistic because, I mean, on the one hand, you know that anything that you do, if you love, there will be a return, but you're not looking for a return. So because you're not looking for it, it is, um, you know, in a sense, what people use the term unconditional love, um, I think they're really meaning something like this. Hmm. So when you engage with a human being, are you saying that you um, teach yourself not to look or identify with their physical costume, but see the spirit within. Is that um, practical, Sister Denise? Is it possible? Because every time I look at you, your physical attributes, are the first thing that strikes me about you, is it possible to just love the soul? Isn't that splitting the hair too fine? Is it, um, is it possible? Is it practical to do so? When you love the soul, it, what it means is that you know, not what you feel, something you know. You know that that soul is your spiritual brother and that the obligation between brothers is an attitude of love and regard. No more, no less. When you come into other relationships, there's other obligations that are implied by the relationships. But the brotherhood uh, between souls, irrespective of the costume being male or female, uh, the, um, the obligation is love and regard. If there is that, then the karma will be correct. So this is why it's very important to develop and cultivate that vision. So um, how does compassion uh, fit into this equation? Is there a difference between compassion and spiritual compassion? I think compassion is compassion. Um, but then what exactly is compassion? The meaning of the word is that um, something like empathy that you really feel what that person is feeling, you feel with that person. And so when somebody is um, suffering or uh, experiencing some difficulty uh, and or experiencing the consequences of having performed action, bad action, because of weakness, then, you know, that uh, attitude and feeling of compassion is extremely charitable. So, Sister Denise, um, in terms of um, um, love, you love somebody by choice. 
You love somebody based on merit. You love somebody based on what uh, they do to you, they do for you, they mean to you. Um, is spiritual love different from that? Yes. Uh, in, in what way? Oh, uh, let me ask the question in this context. Um, is spiritual love earned or is it just handed out without reason? I think it's not quite one or the other. Uh, on one level, spiritual love is you are a loving person because that is your identity as a soul. What you are obliged to do for yourself in terms of your duty to yourself, your love for yourself is I need to make sure that my level of love is the highest possible because then, um, you know, I am giving out love. The soul who is weak cannot love. A um, soul who is weak cannot love. No. Uh, Sister Denise, that is a bomb of a sentence. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it means that you are so empty that you're needy. And loving means giving. Being empty and needy means you, you don't have anything to give. You're in the receiving stage. You're like a beggar. You cannot give. A person who empowers themselves through their meditation they take in these fundamental qualities from God, purity, peace, power, love, and bliss. So love is an energy that you take from God and which is a sustaining force that you distribute as and when you are a powerful soul. So, Sister Denise, I take it from what you are saying that the world has far too many uh, souls who are empty and um, weak and therefore cannot love but they use the words I love you what do they mean then are they lying to themselves it's not really that uh, when somebody you know in, in Spanish it's much more honest yo te quiero I want you <laughs> <laughs> yes that is uh, that is quite honest yeah and it means that I see you as a source of energy that I can use to fill myself. But when you take that energy from another human being, first of all, they don't have that much to give, even though it looks promising, but also it doesn't stay with you very long. So what you really need is God's love. And you can't have God's love if you're not in relationship with God. So people who are disconnected from God, they used up all their purity, peace, power, love and bliss. And so they are on the lookout for ways to fill. And people generally feel fill from people, places and things. And especially people, you know. Um, and nowadays, because relationships with people are so catastrophic, uh, they've now turned to animals because animals um, are less desirous of something in return. Unfortunately, people even abuse animals. This is the problem. Humanity is devoid of power and therefore unable to love and therefore starts to be predatory on each other. And this is why we have so much human suffering and we're in such a catastrophic situation, so much violence, so much abuse. And so the only solution to that is to begin to fill from God. And if you are able to receive God's love and fill yourself up with that love, then you can also be a distributor. Now, Sister Denise, there are people who um are spiritually empty, but um, they don't want to go to God, uh, who exist in a type of limbo. Uh, what becomes of them? Are they doomed to a life of misery and unhappiness and the uh, given taking of false love? Or what is their lot in life? Well, these would be hungry souls. And so they will try and find it wherever they can find it. But it, uh, it's a downward spiral. 
and I think that um, there's no option but that you will at some point hit bottom and then you will have to turn to God because there's nothing else. And this is the tragedy in a way. People really f finish up all their options before they turn to God. If they would do it earlier, it might be better, but it doesn't seem to work like that. Um, I want to focus now a bit on self-love. Within spiritual terms, um, is part of your spiritual understanding that the first thing you should do is to love yourself? Because there are many people who don't believe in loving yourself. Is that advocated within spiritual terms? No, you have to love yourself. Who is going to love you if you don't love yourself? Mm -hmm. The more you love yourself, the more other people will be able to love you because um, you will not be, uh, you know, just uh, like a consuming from them, you see. Because if you love yourself, you're taking care of yourself, then, you know, it's actually more possible for you to draw love from God. You see, if you don't love yourself, you won't allow anyone to love you either. And you certainly will reject God. And there'll be a kind of more of a hatred. Uh, so there'll be this um, neediness, this hunger, this emptiness, and a rejection. So, Sister Denise, uh, one starts loving the self, and you do that through a conscious uh, practice to to succeed at this. Because a lot of us, when we are embark on a spiritual journey, we don't even um, we start w uh, with a negative balance. Okay, you fill yourself up with love, and then you do what with it? I think that it's not really that you start with loving yourself and then you love God and then you love other people. It's not really quite so consecutive like that. Uh, what happens when you begin a spiritual practice is you learn to turn within and there you discover spiritual qualities and you discover the source of that is God. So you're absorbing from God, you're loving yourself, you're discovering, you're exploring, you're finding out, you're experimenting, and gradually it becomes a little clear to you. Then you start to see that the way that you have been thinking of love has been more to do with sustaining yourself from temporary sources so then you start to see that um, the temporary source that you're using is not really going to do what you need and you need to really take your source and resource yourself from God then you have to start building a relationship with God which changes the nature of your relationship with yourself, your relationship with people, with places and things. And so your whole thinking begins to operate differently. So it's a bit of a holistic process rather than a consecutive process. We have become dysfunctional as a result of spiritual confusion and spiritual emptiness. Now, not only are we dysfunctional as human beings, we also are engaged and intertwined with a host of, inner host of dysfunctional relationships. Um, when you become spiritually aware, what happens to your relationships, given the fact that neither you nor anyone else is perfect, and you do love these people in your life, but you know that they're not necessarily on the same level as you. What happens to your relationships? It's really that you change your relationship with God and that by itself begins to have an effect on your other relationships. Your relationship with God is like this. You may be dysfunctional. All your relationships may be more or less, to a greater or lesser extent, dysfunctional. But God is not dysfunctional. God is the only being in the universe at this time who's not dysfunctional. Sure, that's actually very powerful. God is the only soul in the universe who's not dysfunctional. So You're when you engage in a relationship with God, God will always be functional in that relationship. And that will 
function as a mirror to you so that when you are behaving in a dysfunctional way with God, it will not work and it also won't be a problem for God. When you behave in a dysfunctional way with another person, it creates a karmic debt and it harms you and the other person. But when you create a relationship with God, um, this is the manner in which God causes you to, to have to become functional if you want any kind of success. So it's a very interesting uh, circumstance to put yourself into. Hmm. Uh, Sister Denise, um, on the subject of compassion, uh, are we our brother's keeper? I think that what we need to understand is that God is the mother, father, friend, etc. of everyone. And um, we are in relationship with different people and our relationships contain within themselves certain rights, responsibilities and obligations. And we need to understand what are our rights, what are our obligations, what are our responsibilities within those relationships. And we need to fulfill our responsibilities and let that be good enough. Uh, unfortunately, conventional morality causes us to get that equation wrong so that you start doing too much or not enough and getting yourself into a um, mix-up and confusion and start to have expectations that you shouldn't have and get disappointed where you shouldn't be and not do things that you should be doing and do things that you shouldn't be doing and so forth. And this is why God will come into the picture and say, you know what, put your attention on me because I'm the one thing in your environment that is functional. Mm -hmm. And just by having that relationship with God, this is really the compassion of God for people. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and through having a relationship with God and observing how the compassion of God works, you can then emulate that and you can start to be compassionate towards other people as a true child of uh, the Supreme Compassionate One. Mr. So Denise, you know, on a very human level, um, irrespective of our relationship with God, we as human beings want to be um, praised for the good that we do by our fellow um, people that we love, our significant others. We want to be acknowledged, we want to be heard. Uh, you'll feel put out if three of your friends were invited to a dinner party and you were left out. There is still that um, the need for human interaction and human needs. Um, how does spirituality um, come into play there? Is it the case that the more closer you get to God, the further you move away from the what's happening down here with other fellow human beings? Or do you just stay in the environment and you, your vision and attitude towards them shifts and your needs? I think that's really more what happens. You know, when you have a relationship with God, it means um, that is always there in the background so that your relationships with other people are not based on you trying to resource yourself from them. But your relationships are rather, you're an actor, they are actors, you're in situations, and you want to act and interact in such a way that your relationship is mutually beneficial. But you don't use them as your source. Once you start using people as your source, it causes the relationship to go wrong. And this is why God says, look, I'm your source. I'm there for you. Um, if any of the other actors act improperly, it doesn't matter. I will, in my relationship to you, fill up that, that gap that is left by their misbehavior. So you don't have to suffer for it or be put out by it. 
which means that um, in your relationships with other people, you start to become an example of correct interaction. So that you are learning from God, others are learning from you. It becomes a bit of a domino effect. And in that way, the way people interact with each other uh, becomes progressively good and progressively correct. And you're kind of bringing God into everybody's picture. Um, so, Sister Denise, will people not uh, regard those who are that involved with God as being cold? I think that if you are filled with the love of God, you're not going to come across as cold. You're going to have a great deal of love to spread, uh, but you're not going to get caught up, enmeshed, or this or that. You know two empty people mutually trying to uh, take from each other. But you also need to learn about boundaries, you see. Because although you become a very loving person, uh, you also do not allow yourself to be used by others. And you d have to deflect them from resourcing themselves from you because you look like a good source of love, so they will start to, <laughs> you know, consume you. Uh, you'll get in trouble like that. A hungry but person might see you as meat. A, a good piece of lunch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So you need to deflect them and say, look, you know, I there's nothing that you can get from me. Uh, you go to the source where I go. Mm. Uh, so you create a border. Coming back to the subject of border control. Mm. Yes, so um, in your spiritual journey, um, there's this expression that comes to mind that much is expected from, uh, the from one to whom much has been given. Um, if you are um, filled with um, God's love, uh, is there duty on you? to um, share this with others? Is this where compassion comes in? Well, you see, if you were privileged to be given and receive, then uh, if you withhold it from others, um, that has been called theft, to withhold your treasures. Uh, you want it to flow. You receive and let it flow through. It doesn't mean that you allow yourself to get emptied out. That is not sensible. But you want to, uh, you want there to be a flow so that you take in, it goes out. But you try also not to get into karmic bondage with people who start to make you their source. So you want to let it flow in a more general way, a little bit like a river. You know, you take your water from the clouds which rain on the mountains and you gather the water and the water flows back to the ocean and along the way people drink a little bit but they don't hopefully take over the whole river although mm. these days you know <laughs> Colorado River never really makes it to the ocean it gets taken by the people on the way mm. in the uh, USA for example for somebody who's spiritually enlightened, the taking of all of this love from God, apart from having a feel-good factor about it, um, what do you use spiritual love for? You are a conduit and um, the love belongs to God and it has to go where God wants it to go. So I think that you need to be aware of yourself as a conduit and try not to get in the way of where it has to go because you're in a sense a trustee of it mm. and uh, if you block it or hold it or something try and redirect it then you'll be interfering with God which is not good for the relationship that you have with God. You want to share anything else before we say goodbye to you today? Well, I think if we look at compassion, you know, what really is compassion? You need to understand and feel 
what does a person need? Because you yourself, if you're in connection with God, you don't just only absorb love, you absorb many kinds of treasures. And so in a way, you are a delivery person uh, from that um, great treasure store. So it's very important to detect what people need and to provide that, because that is really your compassion and your love. You know. The world is a poorer place because there are far too many who have love to give. Most people are doing this, aren't they? Sure. So um, people who are spiritually aware become like beacons of light throughout the globe in order to share what God has given them. Yeah, and it's very good to be a beacon because it gives you a great sense of purpose. You know, you receive beautiful things, you give them out. That's good. On that light note, Sister Denise, we thank you for joining us. This has been extremely enlightening. Uh, for those of you who are listening and watching, I do hope that um, you take Sister Denise's message to heart. If uh, you have people in your life who do not love you like you want them to, who've disappointed you, who've let you down, uh, this is quite commonplace because as Sister Denise is sharing, people have become empty, spiritually depleted, and though they may want to give to you, they simply do not have it in their own uh, reservoir. So take from God because he is full and willing to give you all the love that he is and then give it to the people around you. Uh, this is what it means to be spiritually enlightened. So a very deep and powerful message from a yogi with 40 years of experience behind her. And I do hope that uh, you learn the art and the joy of spiritual love and compassion. Thank you so much for joining us and we hope to see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>